So we had the Arm Tech Con 2012. So what do you think about this, this show? Um, Arm, Arm uh, Tech Con is always a good show, uh, certainly for the last five years that I've been going. It's, uh, I think it's become one of the major shows, one of the ones you really have to come to. The, the hold that ARM has over over the future, really, is, I mean, you've got to, as an analyst, you, you absolutely have to follow what's going on in, in, uh, with ARM. So Major Show, in comparing, comparing what kind of shows? Hmm? Would you say, like, uh, Major Show, like CES and stuff like this? Or what do you call CES, it? Um, uh, Intel, um, what's the Intel? IDF. IDF, yeah. IDF uh, shows like that, yeah. So, they announced Cortex A50, right. and uh, where do you think ARM is going? Well, I, I, I think what they're doing is they're defining the new heterogeneous architecture uh, for the future. Um, you know, basically, the way they, they're working is, is uh, they're, take, they're using their collaborative community, and, 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 and actually the other way around too, the collaborative community, is using R to set the architectural direction uh, for for the future. I mean, all these uh, these new uh, initiatives, uh, the uh, leg initiative for the server market. Um, uh, you know, they they're just they're just setting standards, and they're doing it very efficiently. I mean, you know, the, the Leonardo is not that old, but it's a couple of years old. And already it's made a major impact. And, and in the standard world, that's amazing. Standards typically take six years. I mean, if, you, if you're going to do a standard, you know, the, the rule of thumb is it's going to be six years before you get anything out the door. And, and they're getting things out the door in, in 18 months. So uh, when they say on stage that they're good at partnerships, mm -hmm. is true? Uh, I, that's, that's the key to their whole... I mean, the competition could catch up on ARM with power management. I'm not saying there's going to, but even if they did, they still couldn't touch ARM because of the connected community. The connected, you know, the, the whole infrastructure, the ecosystem, is what makes this whole thing work, and which is driving and and developing uh, the the standards for the future. So it's not only it. Technology advantage, or no, it's just like a—it's kind of like a business model it's a advantage. Business model advantage. Business model, and uh, what else is there? I it, mean, you know, if you look at it, when they're doing what Intel did a long time ago. I mean, Intel took the uh, architectural control away from IBM for the PC. But if you look at their infrastructure, you know, their connected community was Microsoft. So it was, you know, it was like, it was Intel and Microsoft, and, and they decided what the PC was going to be, uh, and have kept the control over the PC for, you know, what, 20 years, something like that. Well, ARM's done that in mobile, and and the two things that have happened is number one, they've done it in mobile, they've they they have architectural control. But they have architectural control to a point, uh, and their their connected community fills in all the gaps, which allows the uh, the competitive position where you can use ARM and yet compete with everybody else that compete use ARM because you can do different things in different areas as far as the community is concerned. And, and then the next thing this and then what's going on now because of low power. Uh, because they pick low power, they're able now to move into all the areas that are having power problems, for instance, servers. Servers having power problems, ARM fits in there perfectly. And then all they have to do now, is, is, which is what they're doing, is concentrating on, okay, what's the requirements for the server market, hence you've got the 64-bit coming out. Uh, is the 64-bit, it's not only for servers? No. No, the, the 64-bit actually was originally requested by the cell phone guys. Really? Yeah. Which but, cell phone guys? Um, can't I, say? I can't say. <laughs> but, but some cell phone guys, cell phone guys the... requested 64 bits because they were looking far enough in the future where they saw that it was, you know, the, the uh, it was a, it's going to be a software problem. You, know, you had to address more than, than three, and it's going to be a memory problem.
as, as you just. So what does it mean, 64 bit? Is it just four gigabyte of RAM? What does it mean? More than four gigabyte of RAM? Is it, that it, one it of the means it, it means you can it, you can write bigger programs that are more sophisticated that can do more work. You know, the high performance guys are all 64, so they can now participate in the high performance computing world. So this is. Not just servers, but the first announcement is server. I mean, it's kind of like first server of, first stuff. Announcement server. Uh, when you look at the server market, that goes from a uh, high performance market all the way down to the cloud, for instance, where, where we're talking about fairly low performance servers. Or one of the search engine uh, uh, farms, which is you know really just fetching them. They're not doing a lot of calculation. So, you know, they'll all address that. They're addressing that now with, uh, with the 50 series. So they've got a 32 uh, solution for, for the uh, connectivity server market. And uh, with the 64, then that allows them to get up into the high-performance market. So uh, are they going to succeed with FinFET? Is it just going to work? Like, for it's sure? going to work. We'll stumble a little work. I mean, it's kind of like a huge new thing, right? Uh, well, the first time I heard that uh, Moore's Law was going to end was at uh, 3 Micron. What so, was that? Hmm? God, that was back in, uh, I think it was around 80, 70. In the late 70s, early 80s. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So we've been predicting this for a long time. I mean, we always predict, or somebody always predicts that Moore's Law is going to end. I, I'm, I'm uh, actually part of the ITRS and uh, do a couple of the uh, couple of sections of the ITRS. What is the ITRS? Uh, that's the roadmap that you know, says this is where we're going. And so, and so we've been, we, well, the, the, whole, the whole reason for the ITRS is to identify and solve the problems that keeps Moore's Law moving. And so, you know, we look at this on a yearly basis, very heavily every, uh, every other year, uh, and say, okay, what do we need, uh, what's going to change, and, and we have to come up with, okay guys, this is what we're going to need in, uh, in five years. So go out and do it so we can make it, and FinFET was about, obviously, one of the, one of the projects ten years ago. But the R&D level spending every year goes up for the whole industry, right? For the whole industry. How much more does it go up? Um, couldn't give you a figure, but it, it continues to go up. And uh, all these EDA companies, yeah. uh, Mental Graphics, yeah. Cadence, yep. uh, Synopsis, all yep. those, are they working with Intel or are they all just working on ARM stuff? What, what are uh, they doing? Uh, the various companies work for various people. It's not, and, and you really can't well, it's it's being driven by uh, the roadmap. It's being driven by IBM, uh, both uh, Mentor and uh, and Cadence do a lot of work with IBM. Snops is, uh, uh, you know, is uh, does a lot of work with uh, with Intel. Uh, you know, it depends upon the companies, but they're all driven. It it's not per se through by markets arm. Them compared to the Intel architecture, uh, they they have to do it. They're they're more connected to silicon than the architecture, so you know they're, they're doing a lot of advanced, more advanced research than they've ever done before. So, with each new generation of uh, uh, ARM processors, yep, there are more and more. There's more and more uh, uh, what's called uh, uh, creativity in the EDA industry. You oh, can yeah. have like you Has can come with more stuff, right? Oh yeah. Like uh, that you couldn't like two years ago. Now there's like many yeah. new yep. inventions. Or what yeah, you like you have to. You, re you, you know, you got a FinFET. Now you got to rewrite all your routers. Rewrite what? All your routers, because your router has to recognize the FinFET rather than uh, a planar device. So you have to rewrite all that back end, all those back end tools. Uh, uh, all the uh, the um, DRC decks have to be rebuilt. Or to take it, uh, take to take in all the new rules that have to do with double patterning. Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, that's 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 the thing about the EDA industry. We're on, we're being driven by Moore's law. The IC CAD tools directly, and then 
reflected up to the, the CAE tools because you know, we're moving up now into ESL because we can't do the size of designs that we're doing today uh, at the RT level. So it uh, keeps, keeps, keeps us moving. So what kind of uh, work do you do every day? Me? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm either ask, uh, answering customers' questions or, uh, or doing research into you know, the, the various technologies. Um, every once in a while I try to get some new customers. So. And uh, the AD industry is keeping busy, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we're in good shape. Hiring, hiring? Hiring, yeah. Last two years have been very good. And this year looks like a good year. And next year even better, for sure? Um, no it's going to be happens. a good year. Maybe yeah. I don't know if it's going to be better yet, but it's, it's looking good. Is there some point where uh, the processors are good enough and you don't need to make them better anymore? No. No? <laughs> not, not as long as people keep, more people keep using um, cell phones and, and, and servers and have, you know, you come up with new, uh, yeah, we, we get, we're de trying to defeat the power problem by coming up with uh, new algorithms for parallel processing. Uh, which is a major task. I mean, that, that we've been we've been dealing with that for ten years now, and we're just starting to get the handle of it. How about the uh, HSA Foundation, the heterogeneous? Uh, that's a big deal, also. That's the, a big deal. I mean, that's the way the computing is going. It's going heterogeneous. I mean, that was that was one of the bets that that ARM won. I mean, so some people and I won't mention any names would prefer to have one processor doing all the work. And ARM said, no, it's not going to happen that way. It's going to be a heterogeneous environment. And they're right. And AMD agrees. And AMD agrees now. Yeah. <laughs> they did in a little while back, but they do now. But it's a big deal, no? Oh, uh, yeah. AMD announces the ARM processor? Sure. How, how big of a deal is it? Well, it, it's a big deal in that AMD probably is... Uh, because of their position in the market, one of the more savvy um, uh, microprocessor companies out there, they've, they've really had to pay attention. You know, they don't have a big control over anything, uh, and uh, so, so it's just okay. This is the way you know, the wagon train's going that way. I'm going to jump on. And, uh, do you think they're going to not just do server stuff? They're going to do tablets, smartphone stuff, and. They're going to do, they're gonna the do anything they can get into, right? You know, and, and that's what the market's about right now. You can, you're going to do anything you can get into. Why wouldn't Intel do the same? You don't know? You can't say? Well, it's, it's, Intel has, has a big... Um, it's an innovative, innovator's dilemma problem, uh, if, if you've ever read that book. You know, that's they sort of were the guy that founded this market, uh, this the, the way of doing business, controlling the architecture, um, and now ARM has copied it and improved on it. Well, their problem is, you know, they're selling silicon at very high prices. Well, ARM selling, you know, selling designs, not silicon at very low prices. So they're enabling a whole world that, you know, it, if Intel, uh, if or when Intel changes, they're going to hit take a, 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 a hit on their uh, bottom line. You know, they're not going to be able to get the margins that, uh, that they've been used to in the PC business. And, you know, once they take the, make the change, then all of a sudden, all their customers that have been paying the high prices for the, for the microprocessors are going to say, hey, wait a minute, well, we, we need to look at something else. Uh, but, but the key is they've got to make the change before everybody looks for something else anyway. They've got to make the change at some point. They've got to make the change. And the make the change, it basically means also make ARM, right? Mm -hmm. It means also making some ARM stuff. Probably. They, they already do ARM stuff because they, they've, uh, you know, they've bought uh, Infineon's group, which uses ARM. So you know, they, they, they use ARM, but they, they have to change the way they design and architect, which is what, what's really difficult for a company.
But do you think the x86 architecture can... No. Could... No. no. What do you think no? no. What do you mean I, no? I, it's, it's got too much baggage. Too much baggage. Too much baggage. And no matter what they tweak it, how they tweak it? The more they tweak it, the worse it gets. The worse it gets? Yeah. It's, it's like bloat, bloat uh, architecture? What is it? Well, we're going down to specific architectures to match algorithms. And they've been building processors to match as much, you know, to cover as much of the ground as possible. So heterogeneous architectures say, don't do that anymore. You, know, you don't want a processor that does everything. You want a processor that does just this. I want a GPU because it does this. I want a XPU because it does this. I want a YPO because it just does this. The, 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 um, the general purpose processor, the CPU as we know it today, is really just going to be a utility processor in the end. You know, they, it, it will be used just for all the stuff that's sort of lying around as leftover. And the, and the real compute functions are going to be handled by a special, a special processor as part of the architecture on the same piece of silicon, of course, but a different, a different processor. So it's Christmas pretty soon, and we're seeing awesome devices being released yep. by Samsung, LG. Yep. These companies are coming with fantastic devices. Yep. In awesome. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is going to happen until next ArmTechCon? What's, what's going to happen there? I, I agree with Warren that, 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 that the connectivity is the next thing to solve. Because you got all these devices, but I still have a hard time hooking things up. I don't know about you, but I, right now my Bluetooth has gone out in my car. You know, and, and so I've got to figure out how to get my Bluetooth to talk to my goddamn phone on you again. And, and then we're talking about what if your phone was your computer and then you just went home and you know, hooked it up to your big screen and, and, and keyboard. Well, I'm saying, that's fine, I'd like to do that, but I'd also like to put it in my car and have it take over all the GPS functions, all the, all the entertainment functions, uh, yeah, and the phone function automatically. Because I'm, I keep cars a long time, I keep cars for 10 years. You know? And the electronics in your car you know, is obsolete in five, well, three maybe, in, in, in the future. <laughs> So, why do I want to buy a car with all that electronics in it? Same with the TV, no? Yeah. You buy a TV for 10 years. Yeah. And you want to upgrade the smart TV as often as possible. Right. Yeah, same thing. Same problem. So, it's the connectivity, or connectivity that's the issue. Can we build, can we get these things all talking to each other? Can you carry around your main computer in your, in your hand at all times? Is that the open white spaces? Part of 700 it. megahertz? Yep. So no more analog TV, and let's use it as a Wi-Fi on steroids. Yeah, that's happening. Yep, the that's US start. kind of signed it, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, the stuff is happening, but it hasn't happened yet. You know, we're going to start seeing more and more of this stuff. Is that kind of like disruptive for carriers as well? Oh yeah. Well, they're just going to still sell their stuff. Well, they're going to sell their stuff. How? I mean, you know, that you know that means all of a sudden there's big has to be big innovations in business models. Because there's a lot of old business models around that, that aren't, aren't going to last. So very disruptive uh, planet. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah this fine. is fun times. And the Silicon Valley is still going to be relevant. Still the center. Still the center. Still the center next year. Hmm? Will be year. next year. Yeah. And two years from now still. Well, yeah, well, it, it won the design war um, coming out of the recession. So that should hold for a good five to ten years. Which is what typically happens until the next real big disruption comes, which will be uh, the end of CMOS, will be the next big disruption. It's not going to be like a Chinese or Indian or something taking over? Not for a while. Not for a while, not yet. No. Uh, Europe, they're just, uh, no. they have the, they're having a crisis, they're not going to do they're, no. huge things. No. Right. But it's a fascinating place, right? Oh, yeah. Silicon Valley. Thank